Good evening everyone, this is Edward Zier with marketing consultant, communications expert, storyteller galore, Cat Tate for our February 2014 webinar. Say hello to the audience, Cat Tate. How was that for a wrap? Thank you, Ed. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you here. And um, look, I'm very privileged to be working with Cat Tate. So be it your, you know, you're here live. And if you're here live, uh, please get the questions through. And also as well, if you're, let's say, watching this on my blog or reading the transcript, you know, have a good read of it. Think about your questions. Get them through to us and we want to give you as much information as we can about giving you powerful copy. Now, first things first in this quirky photo, that's me on the right with a funny look. In the centre is the amazing Cat Tate. And don't you look great there, Cat Tate? Well, that was after a morning run, so I didn't look my best, but thank you for saying that otherwise. <laughs> and, and of course, our fine colleague, Martha, who does websites. It's fantastic to have you along. This is our free webinar where we're here to give you amazing content. Now, there's heaps of people on the line that I haven't met before and some that I do now, so hello to everyone. Uh, but that's me on the top left. That's awesome. Martha on the top right, who I do a lot of work with. That's my cat, Pandy. We've got two cats now. And that is a seminar that I held last year. And um, just got to say, it's an absolute pleasure. And I'm a marketing mentor, and I get to interview amazing uh, people like Cat Tate on my show. You do. You do a great job of that too. Now, what it is, I'm just going to go through the introduction, and really it's going to be about Cat Tate. It's going to be Cat Tate teaching us how to write um, powerful advertising copy, teaching us how to really sell and how to use the power of words to really get your point across. In fact, what are you going to tell us, uh, Kat? Well, look, there are a few secrets, and I don't want to reveal them all now. Um, they'll definitely come out as we go through. But what I'm actually looking at and the angle I take with my business is this concept of strategic storytelling. So everyone has a story, whether that's in business or in life or in both, if you're a small business owner. Um, and it's taking the approach of, okay, what is my story? What makes me different to my competitors? And how can I share that story with my audience? Uh, amazing stuff. And thank you, Kat. And I'm really excited about it. Listen, what I want to do is I'm just going to run through um, really what I'd like to keep your mind open to during this. As we're doing the webinar, think about your business objectives. Think about your preferred style of marketing. And again, you know, Cat Tate and I are you know, very intelligent yet very quirky characters. There's definitely <laughs> definitely a lot of Johnny Depp channeling uh, going oh, on right now. What fear and loathing in Las Vegas? Or <laughs> yeah, no, a movie that people actually watched. Oh, oh. yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> Lone Ranger. And um, look, I and really your corporate culture and how you like to write. Uh, think about ideas that work for you. And really what the whole point of this webinar is, is that, look, we're not here to play expert and tell you how to live your life, but our goal is to give you as much different perspectives and insights as possible and take out of it what has meaning to you. You may not agree with everything we say, but there might be that one little thing that you can put into your business tomorrow to rapidly improve your results. What do you think about that, Kat? Yeah, I think that's a really important point actually to make, Ed, um, particularly in a small business and medium business um, you know, arena is we sort of freak out and think we have to do everything today and we've got this big list of all these marketing ideas and it can be so overwhelming that you get stuck. So my advice is don't worry about doing everything. Pick the one thing that really resonates with you, whether it comes out tonight or at another point in your journey, and just give that a crack. Uh, precisely. And what this is is that we're cutting through the chase and we're just giving you the valuable information. As Kat very well put in, um, I used to suffer from overwhelm very badly and that's where you think you've got to do 800 things at once. And look, the fact is as a small business owner and entrepreneur, you'll forever, ever, ever be behind the eight ball yeah. in terms of things. The list never ends, doesn't it, Kat? It never ends. <laughs> And I think a key mental skill is learning how to prioritise. And just because you've got 800 things to do, just do four that day and just continue living your awesome life and get the results. That's it. Um, I've been a marketing mentor. I've been in the marketing profession for years. I've been in my business for about three years. Clocked over 20,000 consulting hours. I think it's more than that. And I'm a workaholic who loves working seven days a week. And here's a big thing. A lot of people come to our webinars who've made big mistakes and they're feeling bummed out. Make those lessons, make them part of your educational tapestry and keep moving forward. And as Rosie the Riveter from World War II said, says, we can do it. Marketing is about making business more awesome, helping people find it and selling more stuff. Now, I want to really get through my bit quick and I just want to get on a cat tape. Now, before I sort of hand over to cat tape, cat tape trusted friend communications expert. I refer a lot of work to her in terms of writing brilliant copy. She's an ex-journalist, uh, you know, PR princess. Online specialist, she called herself a PR princess. I did. I was going to say that wasn't something that Ed came up with. Yeah, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to call, you know, uh, 
Kat Taylor PR princess, although I think she's brilliant at public relations. And she's a brilliant marketer and she understands the power of words. And really, I want to hand this over to Kat Taylor as quickly as possible. Here's my take on words is words are the basis of language. And you've got to think about a lot of people, especially people who are very strategically focused, don't often put much importance into words. But words can be, I hate you, let's go to war, and words can be, I love you. You know, they're just words, but the emotion that it conveys. Words have power, absolutely. Exactly, and um, I love this graphic, uh, you know, you've got the uh, stick figure family and position open. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure Kat Tate and I can both relate to that situation. <laughs> Yeah, and look, words are critical in marketing. Having the right words, and especially as a small business operative, making sure you're speaking the right words to really hit with your audience. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, um, if you haven't already, feel free to check out my Facebook page. There's a great photo of Daniel Doherty there. And my Facebook page, I'm always blogging, I'm always putting out information there. Have a look at that and you can see how I've personally used words to help market my own course. You might learn something to suit to your own business. LinkedIn. Now, for a lot of you on the line, LinkedIn is critical. And if anything, having someone like Cat Tate to write some really powerful copy to make your LinkedIn sound amazing mm. is critical. In fact, what's your take on the LinkedIn profile, Cat? It's actually really interesting because I am finding I'm getting a lot more work these days with writing LinkedIn profiles for people. Um, it's a very inexpensive thing because it doesn't take a copywriter a lot of time to do, but it can mean the difference between attracting your audience who is on LinkedIn and not attracting that audience. Yeah, and, and very, very, very good point. Uh, like all things, feel free to visit my blog, The Edward Files. Uh, that's on my website. And this is an example of how I use ongoing content to really engage people. And, of course, my awesome marketing vault. Have a look at this. And I don't mean just to sell my awesome marketing vault, but... Have a look at the page and scroll down it, and you can see how we've used words, very powerful words that are emotive, to really connect with people. Now, the reason why I'm not just doing show and tell here, what I think is actually quite important as a marketer is, let's say you're in business, and I want to pick on Daniel Doherty is on the line, and Paul Sheep. Paul Sheep's an amazing video guy. Daniel Doherty's a high-end web guy. It's always great to study people that you like, people that word things in a certain way, and work out how you can adapt that to your own business to make yourself sound awesome. What mm -hmm. do you think of that concept, Kat? Yeah, completely agree with you there. Absolutely. So what I want to do is I just want to hand this over to Kat. So everyone, that's Kat Taylor, right? Give her a hand, everyone. Yay, Kat Taylor, it's all yours. Go for it, Kat. And before <laughs> I let Kat take the reins, please get your questions through. Um, we're relying on questions and fill in your chat box and keep it going. There we go, over to you, Kat oh, Tate. Look, everyone's writing applause in the box. I appreciate that because it's very quiet here in the, <laughs> in the studio. Um, but, yeah, thanks. I just want to jump in and, and follow up on what we were talking about before, which is, um, which is storytelling. And what Ed was actually talking about just then is headlines. I actually think headlines are the most important part of telling your story. Obviously, sharing your content is important too. But if we take it back to the very first step, your headline can be really powerful. There's a reason for that. Have a think about looking at a website that you're on today. How long did you spend on that website? Probably, what, a few seconds? People are lucky if you're on there for, for a couple of minutes looking at their information. So your headline, whether that's on your website, whether it's a blog post or a tweet, whatever it might be, you've got a few seconds to make the best first impression. And think about it this way. Your headline is your first, and it may even be your last impression that you have to, to make with your audience. So it's really important to make that stick. Um, and look, if you're not a good writer, hire someone who is. I'm not just saying that to push the copywriting field, but it's worth investing money the same that you invest in your design. And may I say as well, most copywriters are very, um, very, very fairly priced, and not just to sell Cat Tate's effort, but up and say to clients. A lot of my clients will need copywriting. You know, you just can't sit there and positive think your way to success. You need positive words to back up your thinking on the way to success. Yeah, and the other thing too is when you're in your business, it's really hard to understand how it looks to other people. Um, we've got some cats in the background making some noise, everybody. Um, yeah, so what a copywriter can do is bring that outside perspective and go, hang on a minute. Your website or whatever it is doesn't actually say anything about this service or I can't actually get a sense of your personality at all. So we're there to really have a look at what you're doing and say, okay, is your voice strong enough and is it really resonating with your customers and prospects? And we're just on the next slide here. Why write when you can speak? Now, Ed's going to jump in here and, and add some points, I think, aren't you, Ed? But what I wanted to just say is... Um, you know, 
copywriting doesn't have to be complicated. And actually, the more complicated style you have when you write, the more people you're going to alienate. So my tip is write the way that you speak. Keep it really simple. Just imagine that you're having a conversation with someone. Keep it casual. Be really short and, and succinct. And don't worry about being a perfect writer. That's not the important thing here. Absolutely. And speaking um, from a marketer's viewpoint, What's really critical is that when it comes to your business and your copywriting is cutting to the chase, being very direct. And this is more of a strategic comment to sort of augment what Kat Tate is saying. But think about what is unique about your business. So, for example, if you're, let's say, writing a tagline for your whole business, what is unique about your business? What is compelling about it? What is your strength? For example, Paul, Paul Sheep on the line who does video work, he does very high quality video. It might be quality videos with style could be a sort of angle. Or let's say Daniel Doherty, high-end web developer. You know, he's got this whole Merlin magic sort of process, which is absolutely amazing. And if anything, we're actually quoted out Daniel here by saying, making the magic happen. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so that's a, that's, a, that's a quote to uh, Daniel from the great work that he's done for us last time, so thank you. <laughs> but it's about, is that the same slide? We've stolen some of Daniel's content. Uh -huh. Oh, no, we're going to have to give you a royalty for this, Daniel. Okay, so this actually is part of Daniel's slide from last time. So there you go. We've got to pay this guy a royalty. <laughs> <laughs> the checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. <laughs> checks in the mail. So there you go. But exactly. Um, yeah, oh, no. <laughs> Did you? So, Cat Tate, you just copied Daniel Doherty, didn't you? I think I might have. Oh, no. That's, oh, Cat Tate's that's, that's dead. That's what copywriting is, isn't it? Yeah, copywriting is <laughs> copying. So, Cat Tate's dead meat. Cat Tate's going to get sued by Daniel tomorrow. Oh. But... Just to make it up to Daniel, Daniel, for example, Doherty has amazing words in his business. His name's Merlin FX. Uh, he's a high-end web designer, and he talks about making magic happens. He talks about online wizardry. In fact, mm. what do those powerful words sort of invoke with you when you hear them, uh, Cat Tate? Well, look, the first thing is that it sets you up as being a bit different, and being different in business is really important. The, the, the market, no matter what market you're in, is crowded and it's saturated and you've only got a few seconds to get your message across. So if you're creating a really strong brand with things like magic and, you know, magician and whatever it might be or something else, if you have a really strong brand and your brand has a really cool personality like, like that example there, um, you're on to a winner. That's great. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, hopefully Kat's advice will get her out of the lawsuit that's coming her way. <laughs> And, uh, I, call, I call it inspiration, by the way, not copying. <laughs> oh, is this stuff from Daniel's? What's going on here? Have we opened the wrong one? Don't tell me we've opened the wrong presentation. Mm. What a disaster. That's oh. what's going on. What is going on here, Kat? I don't know. Have you missed the original content? Guys, this is embarrassing. You're just going to all bear with us very quickly. This is, this is absolutely amazing. But while you're sorting that out, Ed, I can definitely yeah, keep going. Yeah, keep talking to the audience um, while I work on this one. Yeah, We've got a technical so look, issue. Ed and I were having a chat before about um, about this shift at the moment in the business world and, and certainly outside of the business world to do with authenticity. And at the moment, people are looking for truth. And what that means is that when you're telling your story online, whether that is through your website, Facebook, wherever it might be, people want to know who you are, the person behind the business, um, how your products are made, um, what the purpose is behind your services. They want to know your story and it needs to be real. So if there's anything that you, you take from this webinar, it's that I encourage you to, to really think about um, your business and what makes you unique, but also how can you, you share your truth with people? And that's a really key part of storytelling. Um, as Ed mentioned before, we, we would love to have your questions. We can actually shape this webinar around your questions. So if there's anything specific that you'd like us to cover with content, please just pop it there in the, the comment box. Um, and you know, Ed, you were talking before about blogging. Yeah, exactly. And I think with this little uh, food part that we've had, we've got to, we just got to run with this cat. We have to. We've had a technical issue and we're embarrassed. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the art in improvisation. We don't know what's happened. We're very sorry, but we're going to change how things are done today. Hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to improvise. We're going to actually go to my main screen. So what we're going to do is a full improvisation here with this big food part. What I actually want to do is spend a bit of time talking to you all about really um, a real practical demonstration about copywriting in action. Yeah. And, you know, again, something funny happened, but I reckon something funny happened for a reason. And I really, think so. we're going to focus a bit on my blog here. And what my blog is, and I'll go back here, is that my blog is basically a means of generating ongoing content to really speak with the audience, to really connect with people. And I think really, 
to get that ongoing content strategy to help me really succeed and resonate with my audience. And what it is is that you can see my screen in action here and we are going to get the full back end tour about what I can do. And what it's all about is really having core content capturing headlines. So I'm going to pick on this one. This is a blog I wrote today and it has absolutely, yeah, it's done very well. It's got a lot of views today. Uh, it might just take a second to load up on your end. And what it is is that it's, look at the headline of this article. Oh, thank you, Paul. I've got a few reads of this today. It's called Being Chicken in Business and How It Keeps You Poor. Now, in this case, I've got a very strong headline. I've got a very compelling image and I'll have very, very, very compelling in messaging to really get there. I'm talking about how I used to be chicken, how I used to do bad things, you know, how I used to not be serious about my business. And as an ongoing content strategy, it's really, really resonated with the audience. Mm. In fact, what's your sort of take on ongoing content and that sort of thing with the audience, Kat? Well, yeah, look, I haven't actually read this particular post, I'll be honest with you, Ed. I've been a little busy today. But um, look, if it's in the similar vein of what, what your other posts have been, what you do that's really um, a great lesson for everyone on the line here is having an opinion. Don't be afraid to have an opinion that's a bit different. Um, you know, you've used an analogy here which is fantastic. You know, being chicken in business, that's really intriguing to me. I want to read this. Like, what are you talking about there? Cool. So I want to jump in and find out what your perspective is. And if it's compelling enough, I'm going to share it. So a question for you, Kat. How does a business owner really get out of their own heads and create super strong words that just helps them sell products like crazy? How does that work, Kat? Look, everyone has their own process for doing it. Um, I have clients who, who get me to write their blog posts for them, so you can get a professional to do it for you. But in terms of um, creating really authentic, real content, I think it's best if it does come from you. Um, and look, the important thing is to just think about what you do in business that's different. Um, where is there a gap in the market? Don't be afraid to go and find people who are doing it well in your industry. So let's say you're a plumber and you find a plumber in the US who's a great blogger. Hey, give that person credit. Write a blog post saying how great you think their latest blog post is um, and start to sort of build up your audience that way and share information that you find. Don't be afraid to, to um, you know, have a strong opinion and don't be afraid to promote other people in your industry either. So what are the sort of words that you would use that really sell? Are there sort of key buzzwords that you would use, Cat Tate? Are there words you can just say that just really nail the audience right between the eyes? Um, look, not, I wouldn't say specifically um, because that depends on your industry, what you're trying to promote. But the really key thing with blogging, um, again, which you do well, is don't look at it as being a way to sell to people. Sure, you may end up getting sales from it. But really, this is a chance for you to position yourself as being an expert, to share your insights, to be generous in the way that you share those insights, and to really build your tribe. Um, so I wouldn't say use any buzzwords. I'd just say be really truthful in what you write. So what's this tribe concept you're talking about? Because I've spoken to lots of um, other people out there. Hmm. And a lot of marketing, we always talk about building a tribe. So let's say we've got, I'm looking at the line, we've got some amazing people. We've got business coaches. We've got, um, you know, we've got property people, we've got consultants, we've got people that own gyms. We've got a really diverse range of audience. What's this whole tribe thing? What are you actually talking about here in building a tribe and how does that make people money, Arkash? Okay, so back in the day we used to just talk about customers, right? So who are your customers? How can we sell to them? That just doesn't wash anymore. Today the whole online space has changed and people want to, um, they're, they're looking for people who stand for something. So let's just say you own a gym. Um, you know, you could come out and have a really crazy opinion about how, how the fitness industry needs to change or about why a particular style of workout no longer works or whatever it might be. So you start to have this really strong opinion, right, and you start to share it with people. When you do that, you actually attract people who go, yeah, that means something to me. I get that. I want to be a part of that community. As you do that and you put that information out there and those insights out there, your tribe will actually then share that with people they know. When that happens, your tribe gets bigger, but you haven't actually had to do any work. So you're building this online community of people who support you and become your fans. It's great. It's really, really great thing. So what are some words that you think, can you give us some examples? What are some words that different people can use, like buzzwords, power words, to really grab the attention of the market? Give us some examples, Kat. Um, Look, again, I mean, it really depends on, on, on the content that you're producing. I wouldn't say that there are any particular buzzwords, and I'd actually steer clear of trying to be too 
salesy in the way that you, you write. So what do you mean by not being salesy? Because aren't we trying to sell stuff, Kat? Yes, obviously your end goal is to sell, um, but today because there's this shift towards people seeking out more genuine businesses and, and, uh, and key influencers, um, it, you can't just be out there with a strong sell anymore. So your intention should be to share your insights and knowledge with people and hey, chances are you're going to get sales out of that. So I wouldn't be thinking so much about what words do I use, I'd be thinking about what ideas do I put out there. Oh, okay, so let's let's pick on an example. Let's say I'm going to pick on Paul Sheaf, who's a video guy in the line. Why not? Hello, Paul. <laughs> and by the way, if you want us to pick on you in this webinar and volunteer, if you want some free consulting now, send us a message, put up your hand, because I'm going to put Kat on the spot, and I'm going to tell her what power buzzwords to use for people on the line today. So Paul Sheaf's a video guy. What on earth would you, uh, hey, uh, Paul Sheaf, loves it. <laughs> by the way, if you want some free consulting from Kat, ask your questions now. So with, with the case of Paul Sheaf, Kat, what kind of words do you think he could use to really get across the strength in video? Um, well, look, this comes back to working out what your benefits are and what's unique about your business um, and coming up with a really strong brand story. So, I don't know. I mean, well, I don't... I'll help you out. I'll tell you a bit of it. Let's say Paul's very good at, very good at quirky shots mm -hmm. and he's very, very friendly to talk to. Fantastic. What, 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 what do you think you could thresh out of that? Um, look, just to throw some things out there, um, you know, you put the quirky into video, um, video out of the, you know, video, you really put me in the spot I here. know, I know, well, I'll, I'll have a shot, I'll have a shot to get Go it going. On. What about, what about quirkiness that sells? Yeah, that could work. What else could you suggest for Paul? Um, oh. I don't know, man. I'd need to do a good brainstorm. Oh, I, 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 for this. Why don't you? Why don't you take that? I, I got cat on this one. I put her <laughs> onto it. <laughs> but no, seriously. And what I'm doing, and I love putting our cat tail on the spot, is that in the case of Paul, for example, I know Paul is a quirky, real friendly video guy. Mm -hmm. It could say, you know, he might use words such as friendly video, awesome results. You know, I might be strange, but my work is brilliant. <laughs> you, you, you see the way that I'm speaking here is that it's very attractive and there's a lot of fun and playfulness in it. Yeah. But what do you think? Can you criticise my copywriting, Kat? What do you think as an expert? No, look, I think you've hit the nail on the head. The great thing you've done there too is keep it really short and sharp and use a bit of humour too, um, which is great. People really, really resonate with that. Um, but what a copywriter will do and what if you don't have the budget for a copywriter, what you can do yourself when, when coming up with this copy is just get to know yourself, you know. If you could, if you had five seconds to to sell your um, your business, what would you say? So I think that's a good example that you've done there. But the reason I don't want to throw out some ideas on the spot like this is because I actually like to put a lot of thought into my copy, and I think you need to as well. So if you're sitting down and you're thinking, all right, you know, what message should I put out there? How should I write it? Don't do a rush job. Have a real strategic think. Get some friends and colleagues involved and come up with some ideas about what makes you different. And that's great. And Paul's just made the ruck. We shoot most, we shoot almost anything that moves and many that don't. There you go. You sound <laughs> like Victoria Police. <laughs> and the thing is, like, shooting, you know, that's an interesting word. Like, so in other words, Paul's in video, he might use the word shooting as a joke. And mm. obviously there's a bit of fun there. Play on words are fantastic. Exactly, exactly. So thank you, Paul. And we've got this great guy by the name of John Mitchell, who's a real estate social media guy. Mm. And he just gave us his web link, which I've just put in. You can see it in the Google. And here's his site, and he's asking me, what do we think of, my, how can I improve as my blog? And so we're just looking at it now. I'm sitting here with Cat Tate. And Cat, looking at his blog, what do you think off the hip that um, can really oh, help them out? Awesome. So let's have a look at the top one here. You've got interesting real estate reads and what does that say? Analysis. Do you know what I would do? I'd actually, because you've got there that you've got, you know, you've collated a few different um, tidbits over the weeks that you've, you know, you've found and you want to present to your audience. Great. I'd actually pull those out and create specific separate posts on each of those interesting things that you've found because the heading... Real estate reads, is it real estate reads and analysis? Yeah, we've got here. Hiding there. Yeah, it's hiding it. Interesting um, real estate reads and analysis. Yeah, so that's quite a general thing to say. It's quite a general headline. It doesn't really tell me much about what's going to be in there. So what is the interesting real estate read? Let's just say you found out the property has gone up 20% in Sydney. That's your headline. 
property creeps up 20% and what it means to you. You know, so make that a really specific headline and make the post quite specific to, to accompany that as well. So you say, for example, in the case of Jaya releasing content, actually find the true value of that article and actually make that the headline. That's it. Right. So, so really is a lot of your advice, Cat Tate, is it really about finding, just cutting to the chase with what's brilliant about Cut it and that's it? Cut to the chase. You might have three seconds, if you're lucky, to get someone to even read the headline. Then what you want them to do is read the first sentence. Then if you're really lucky, they're going to read the next sentence. Do you know what I mean? So you haven't got a lot of time to actually be compelling. So get it there right in the headline and you've got a better chance of success. Yeah. And I think a good example is um, as much as the ABC News has been under a lot of scrutiny lately, no. <laughs> um, I'm still a big fan of the ABC News, even though they've been in a lot of, in a lot of trouble. And I'm on yeah. the ABC News homepage, right? Now, love or hate the ABC, they know how to make um, captivating headings. And I know this is a negative example. This is just on my PC now. Asylum seeker dead, 77 injured in Manus right. That, unfortunately, it, in a negative way, is a very compelling headline. Yeah, it is. Ignoring the subject matter because we, we don't want to get into that. But looking at the headline, if you didn't even read that article, you know what's happened, right? You know exactly where it's happened, uh, what's happened in terms of an asylum seeker being killed and 77 being injured. So if you don't read the story, you've got two seconds to get your news for the day, you've got it. And that's amazing. An interesting one. If you look at the top right, we've got Craig Thompson found guilty. Oh. Now, I, I don't know if you guys know the backstory of Craig Thompson, but uh, Craig Thompson was a, um, a Labor uh, member of parliament and he had a union credit card and a mobile phone and he used to call up certain services. Oh, sorry, alleged. Well, actually now he's found guilty, I can say it. I don't know. I don't know if you can. Well, I don't know. According to this, <laughs> it, well, according to the headline, the ABC reporting is found guilty. This guy was calling for certain services at 2 a.m. using union credit card funds. And what's interesting is that Craig Thompson found guilty. If you know who Craig Thompson is and he's found guilty, you're going to open this article. In fact, in fact, let's open the article now. I, don't, I think I looked at it earlier today, but let's see what it says here. So look at that. You know, it's, you know, as it loads up, it might take a bit of a delay on your end. But, you know, Craig Thompson, fraud trial, court hands, hands down guilty verdict. Notice how the wording is just in your face, fraud trial, guilty verdict. It's just enough to keep you addicted and just keep you reading. Yeah, and if we look at this in a marketing sense, we can call those keywords. So the keywords we've got here in the headline are Craig Thompson, that's a keyword phrase, uh, fraud, guilty. So if you're going to go and search online for any of those keywords, ABC is probably going to come up pretty highly in those search results. Exactly. So what are you talking about here, Kat? You're talking about keywords and search results. Mm. Take us a little back a little bit. What's this thing about keyword and Google search? How does all that work, Kat? Yeah, well, look, that's a whole other webinar, and you can get quite deep into that topic. But if we just look at the, the sort of general idea there, when you go into Google or any other search engine, but most of us use Google, let's admit it, um, and Ed's going to do an example here. Oh. Um, if you're searching for something, let's search for that now. Craig Thompson. Oops, sorry. I was just doing uh, the search bar. Yep. Craig Thompson. I know what it's doing. It's, it's directing it to the top. That's all right. So yep. if you look at the top, we're typing in it's Craig, Craig Thompson. Thompson. It's Craig Thompson. There's a P in it. So I hope it's the right Craig Thompson. And we'll just wait for the search results to come up here. Yep, there we go. We've got all the stuff on Craig right, Thompson. Cool. Now look at all the news items that have come up there and see how it's bolded the keyword phrase that you popped in. So anyone who's created content around that keyword phrase is going to appear. Now, obviously, news sites are, are such massive databases um, online that they tend to get favoured in search results. They're seen as being uh, credible sources of information. So if you do write a blog post about Craig Thompson, maybe it won't get on the first page of yeah. Google. <laughs> um, but as you build a blog, as you build a content database online, you will start to get points from Google and the search engines, and it will creep up the, the search results. Yeah. And I suppose translating that into more sales speak, what Kat uh, Tate is alluding to in style is that when you're writing content, especially online, let's say you're writing content on your website, you want to think about keywords. So in other words, if you're writing, let's say it's video production, you know, in the case of Paul Sheaf, or it's John Mitchell, it's property in Seven Hills. You want to use those words mm. in as many articles as you can because what Google does, Google has an, basically an artificial intelligence that indexes websites every day. And the more you have those words in your website, the more likely it is to stand up in Google. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is another webinar itself. We're here to more talk about words yeah. and how to construct sentences. But it's all related. It, definitely all related. And be it, you know, it's online or traditional sort of media, all those things are very, very important. Yeah. And in fact, what I'm going to do is, because this has gone on a back of house thing, I'm just going to open up 
my actual ticket for my upcoming uh, webinar. So you're going to see the back of house of my uh, directory structure. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to, you're going to see behind the scenes of Edward Zier and I'm going to open up the actual ticket that I've been using to actually invite people along to our upcoming event. So if you see on the screen, it might take a moment or two to load up. And this is a good example, and this is an offline. This is an actual physical ticket that a few of you on the line, I've actually handed it to. And what it is, is that it's all about big words, big messages. So be it it's a website, or it's a physical ticket, or it's a flyer, or a business card. Notice the big words and the way it's designed. So I'm going to jump in a bit of design here. You see the picture of lovely Martha and I? You know, don't oh, we look great there? That. There we go, that photo's taken on an iPad. Awesome <laughs> business boot camp. Okay, you can see some very, very big, uh, compelling words there. On the right-hand side, admit one free. So we're giving away an amazing seminar. So notice how I'm using buzzwords such as awesome, business, free, admit. Yeah, and how you also said that you're using big words, but, but they're also not. There's simplicity in that. If you can just nail, you know, the most simple way of saying something, that's how you get your audience interested. So you've done it so well there. There's not one word there that is a waste of space. Well, oh, thank you, Kat. It means a lot coming <laughs> for you. And we'll zoom in a little bit and just dig that little I, bit I deeper. didn't write this, by the way. I'm not promoting my own coffee. Yeah, I know, but Kat can do better than this. Uh, but no, the point is, is that if you look at this sort of ticket, is it's simple words, they're bold words. You know, and I think Kat's really touched something there, is that it's got, you want simplicity, you want simple words, compelling words, words that just sound amazing and just really, I think, hit the audience right between the eyes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, it's, I guess suppose a question, and please get your questions through, awesome audience. The question I have for you, Kat Tate, if someone, you know, has an idea, and let's say they're not ready to speak to a copywriter yet, mm. what do you suggest to them to help them flesh out their own ideas to get the right words to make it sound sexy? A word that I love to use is inspiration. I talked about it before. Um, if you go online and you look at what your peers are doing in other markets, let's just say you've, you know, we'll go back to the plumber example, you've got plumbers in anywhere, London, America, if you just Google plumber in America, plumber London, have a look at what your peers in other areas are doing and don't be afraid to, um, I'm not going to say copy, but to use their ideas as inspiration. Um, that's probably the best way to start your, your brainstorm. So, oh, here we go, we're going to type this in. Um, and have a look at what, what people are doing. I don't call competitors, competitors. I call them colleagues. These are your colleagues. And if they're doing great work, share it because chances are that that's going to come back to you when you write great content that they want to share. Um, so yeah, get an idea of what other people are doing in your market and then look for the gaps as well. So what aren't they doing? What voice isn't out there? What opinion isn't being pushed out there? And then be the voice that is a bit different. Wow, and that sounds very good. And I agree with that and I even do that in my own business. I recommend it for my clients. It's great to look at other sites, even from different industries, yeah. and successful sites. Look at the words they're using. Look at how they're speaking to the audience, and look at how they're really causing a resonation with their customer base. And I think that's very, very, very important. Yeah. The other thing too to remember is you don't need to actually go to a copywriter with nothing. You could have um, all your notes there. You could have a website that you've written yourself. And to get a copywriter to tweak it for you isn't going to cost, cost much or take much time. So if you're on a tight budget, that's another way to do that. Because your, your ideas are there, which is the important part. Well, wow, that's absolutely amazing advice. And one thing that you maybe actually think of is as I'm sort of going through my back of house and everyone's seeing everything, <laughs> the other thing I really like, and I'm actually going to pick on my own website here, and I'm actually going to click the events key. This is our awesome business boot camp coming up. I'm just going to pause the video so it doesn't slow down everyone's uh, internet too much. But what it actually is, is that, you know, this is the Awesome Business Bootcamp page. And this has been written with a lot of work. So, you know, we've done a lot of work into it, got all the wording perfect, just so it makes sense uh, online. And especially when you're talking websites and stuff like that, you really want to have simple, bold words, intelligent words that really just get people wanting to buy. And have a think about words, and these are some of my own personal words that I like is free, but, now, value, quality, enhancement, uh, success. What other top buzzwords do you like? Just general words yeah. that grab human in mind. Um, look, they're probably the main ones. Um, I would also be looking not just at the words that you use, but also the way you use them. So keep them really short. A lot of people say, oh, you can't start a sentence with but or and. I tell you what, 21st century marketing, that's what you need to do. Start a sentence with buzz, start a sentence with and. Keep it short and sharp. 
and it gets really dynamic then. Um, but yeah, they're great buzzwords, they're great examples. Yeah, so dynamic, successful buzzwords, that type of thing. So of course, please get your questions through. Um, we love questions and this webinar has gone off on a tangent. But we're actually, I'm glad it's gone off yeah, on a tangent. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> because instead of us just lecturing you, we're actually getting deep into your questions. So get your questions through, ask us what you want. And while you guys are coming up with your questions, I'm actually going to pick on another example. Ooh. Well, who should we pick on, you think? Oh, let's have a look. Who have we got on the line here? Well, I've got a few people on the line. What about Peter Oliver? Peter. He's a good lad. Peter Oliver. Let's go type in Peter Oliver into Google. Let's see what happens, right? So Peter Oliver's on the line. Ooh. Oh, that's not Peter Oliver. That's not Peter that's Oliver. That's Peter Oliver. What's your website, Peter Oliver? No, Starburst. Star no, Dutch what's your... Photos. What's your... Is it? Yeah, is that the one you want us to look at, Peter? Yeah, Peter, give us your uh, email address. I'll try from peteroliver.com.au. I wonder if it goes to him. There you go. There we go. So we're going to go to Peter Oliver's site. Starburst. Starburst. Dash photo. Dash PG. No, 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 PH. Oh, PH. <laughs> Peter's on a typo, but we'll ignore that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Pogoto. All right, <laughs> got it. So I've just loaded up now. So Peter's on the line. We're just going to check out his website. And it's not loading up. <laughs> Is it starburst-photos, Peter? Oh, do you want to double-check that domain and come back to us, Peter? Yeah, double-check that and come back to us. It's not loading up for some weird reason. Mm. So for that one, let's – I've got a different one. Let's go to Daniel Doherty's website. Okay. So this is Daniel Doherty, a great guy on the line. We're going to go to his website. What's going on here, I wonder? Let's try that again. MerlinFX.com.au. I wonder what's going on here. <laughs> what's going on? The websites aren't working. There's something weird going on, people. Mm. I reckon there's something strange going on. Well, look. Ah, here we go. go. There we go. The, the, the internet wasn't talking to us. So we're on the amazing Daniel Doherty's website. Uh, no, I want to blame Telstra on that one. Uh -huh. There we go. No, there's something funny going on here. So what it is is that we're on Daniel Doherty's website right now. And in this case, we've got the website here. And I quite like Daniel's website. Mm. You go to his website, you've got the beautiful Merlin effects, got some beautiful graphics, and look at his wording. Our online wizardry brings you the magical client attraction and profitability through our proven online marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. What is, that's amazing wording, Kat. Yeah, there are so many um, good elements in what, what that copy is there, so I want to just break it down for everyone. The first thing is, have you noticed how it's not all about the business? We're so wonderful, we're number one. It doesn't actually say that. It says, this is what we've got, and this is what you get from it. You get magical client attraction and profitability. Hey, everyone wants that, right? How do you do it? Through proven online marketing strategies. So if I don't read anything else, I know whether this is for me, and I'm, I, I feel like there's a reason to read on. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Some very, 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 very good feedback um, from, uh, you know, Cat Tate. I didn't forget your name there. <laughs> yeah. yep. Am I called, you know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know. And he's, well, there's Peter's website. I haven't seen this website yeah. before. Uh, it's loading up now. It's more, I suppose, being a photographer. It, our pleasure, Daniel. Love your work. I suppose being a photographer, um, Peter is um, all about... Um, really compelling images, really getting that sort of point of view across. Yeah, and that's that's the important thing. Peter knows what he does well. Photographs. So he's made that the focus of his work. Don't think you'll you know you have to write amazing copy. Focus on, on what your product is, your service. Man, I love it. Now a lot of one of my other friends I was on is Sophie Francis. I'm gonna pick on her website. Sophie is that all right, Sophie? So I think it's SophieFrancis.com. There's Sophie Francis's website. And this has changed since I've looked at it last. Ooh. Wow. Very so, swish. yep, you can see her website loading up now. Sophie Francis has done work on a website. Listen to this. Realize your strengths to realize more of your potential. Nice. That is very, very captivating. I think, look, it's really good. I've just picked examples that are random here. Mm. But I think it's very fair to say, Kat, a lot of people are using some very compelling, strong wording here, aren't they? Yeah, and it's actually really great that you pick these examples, um, even if it has just been on yeah. a whim. Because all of them have shown how you need to be quite succinct and strong and get to the point. And all three we've just looked at have shown that. That's cool, really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's um, yeah, very, very, very sort of compelling work. So the other thing is great. Look, we love your questions. We're just giving commentary on general sites right now. But a few things I've noticed that we've picked up. Have you noticed that a lot of the sites we're saying are good examples actually don't have much wording? Mm. There's actually not much messaging here. 
they're actually quite simple sort of sites. That's true, but let me tell you, to, to nut down a message into, say, six or so words is a lot harder than writing a thousand words. Um, so there's actually a lot of thought that, I don't know who wrote this website, whether it was you, Sophie, or, or if you used someone, but there would have been a lot of thought that went into actually um, narrowing that message down to so few words and making it that impactful. So there's a, there's a lot of thought there. Yeah, oh, Peter Oliver said, Cat starts work on my website tomorrow. <laughs> That's awesome. I so, actually yeah. am, Peter. Looking oh, forward to it. So has Peter actually hired Cat's Hope? He has. Oh, so there's corruption going No, it's uh, fine. No, no, no. Cat's a good decision. Good decision there. Hey, look, does anyone else a volunteer to pick on their website? So I'll just start picking them at random. Um, please send it through if you want us to volunteer. Um, I'm going to pick on, who should we pick on? I'm trying to think of a good, who's on the line that we can pick on? I don't know a lot of these people. There's a long, the yeah, there's a long list there. Yeah, a long list. I don't know who's... Would anyone like us to actually have a look at it and give you some feedback? Yeah. But while you guys are thinking that, I'm going to come up with a few sites that I like. I'm going to come up... Good idea. I'm going to go to Microsoft. Mm. Let's go to... I'm just going to type in Microsoft Corporate. Uh, so Microsoft Corporation. Oh, we've got one from, um, uh, from Jai. We'll check out this one. I'm just going to go to Microsoft Australia Devices and Services. And I'm a big Microsoft fan. That site looks really Ooh, good, doesn't it? rubbish. What's going on here? I think you. There we go. There we go. It might be the webinar software interdicting things. Yeah. Man, that looks good. So fresh. Yeah, look at that site. And it's, look, there's so little copy there, but the copy that is there it just hits the message, doesn't it? And, and, and it's, it's, I really appreciate the sentiment of what you're saying, Kat. It's, notice how all these big companies and these successful companies, they're not giving you pages of text, they're just giving you real short, powerful bits of information, aren't mm -hmm. they? That's it. So you're saying that the big companies have figured out less is more. Less is more, absolutely. Well, wow. And the great thing about when you're in small and, you know, the sort of small business market is all your competitors probably still have really archaic, cluttered websites. So even if you just tweak your home page and, and one other page, you're going to really set yourself apart from them and start being like the big guys. Absolutely. Now, I've got a few a bit of feedback here. So, um, yeah, we've got uh, Joanne Mitchell. He's given us another site, Elders from Toon Gabby. I'm going to oh, put that in. Let's have a squares. Yeah, let's check that out. God, only a few of you want free consulting. So, I just typed in Elders Toon Gabby. <laughs> cool website. No, so it might just take a second for you to upload. There we go. What do you, that's, a, that's pretty cool. Yeah, nice. What I like there is there's lots of different capture points. So, see how in the bottom there are four different boxes there? and they're going to take you through the different parts of the site. And I imagine that home page header is going to take you to some pages as well. So they've been really clever in the way that they've separated out the different touch points of their website and where they want you to go. Yep, yeah, I think it's really, really good. Now, nice one, Jai. And, and again, what I want to say is it's not all about your copy. Um, this is a great example of, of the combination of fantastic design and fantastic copy coming together to create a brand. As for example, like quite often I have a lot of clients that need a website and a copy. So it might be Daniel Doherty and Cat Tate. Cat will do all the wording and Daniel Doherty will do the website. That's really it. good quote. So I've got, few, I've got a great question here from Paul Sheep. I believe in having enough words to cover every part of my message in particular when I get technical mention brands and models of equipment I use. Shirley positions me as the expert in this field. Oh, yeah, definitely, Paul. But what I would say to you is that your website is your, your online shop front. So keep your home page really simple um, and then have options for people who do want to delve into the really technical side of what you do. A great way to present that information to the real technical staff is to have a blog. That's where you can get really into the nitty gritty of what you do, but you'll find that most people just want to get a clear snapshot of what you do and whether it's for them. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to my main uh, website here. It might take a second for it to load up. Uh, but, you know, on my you know, main website here, for example, you know, the home page of my website is just designed to get information. It's just designed to get across base points, just get people connecting um, with really what I have to say to the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, a, I think a good home page is simple. It just it gets across the base base topic, but in exactly what Kat's saying, your home page might be quite simple, but when you, let's say, go into the blog or whatever, it delves in that little bit deeper and gives a lot more richer, more valuable information. Yeah, yeah. Think of it as, um, I don't know, levels of a house or something. That might be a good analogy. But as you get, you know, further down into each level, you get more and more information for those people who are sticking around to read it. But when you're saying you want to position yourself as an expert in your field, 
definitely use your blog as a tool to do that and share that amazing knowledge that you do have about your area. Absolutely, absolutely. And sharing can be as simple, again, this is not a Facebook or social media you know, um, webinar, we're more interested in words, but taking the link and just popping it straight through Facebook. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as that and a great means of uh, getting your content out. So. Yeah, I think that's great. Look, mm. we've covered a lot of ground. I'm actually glad this thing broke yeah. and we started doing Daniel's webinar by accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so lawsuit in tomorrow. But look, what other insights um, do you have for the audience? And look, um, please get through your questions, everyone. I'm sort of glad that it went yeah. in this random direction today. Yeah, me too. And look, I do have just some top tips that I, I would like to share with you and I hope you find useful. Um, as I'm reading these out, feel free to pop in any questions. Um, but don't feel that you've got to write these down because there will be a recording coming your way. The first thing to think of with your content is to make it shareable. Always think about that. Always have that in the back of your mind. Why am I writing this? And who's going to share it? And why are they going to share it? That'll help you get really targeted information that's really compelling, like your chicken post today. Mm. Right? That's mm. pretty shareable. Is it? So you think my chicken post mm -hmm. is very shareable because yeah. the thing was it was just so simple. Yeah. Simple, simple can be the best way, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, it's funny, it's only, you know, being chicken in business and how it keeps you poor. It, it's been one of my most popular articles, yet it was one of the most shortest and briefest. Well, there you go. Um, so that's my first tip is to make it shareable. My second tip is to have a great headline. We touched on this before, but I want to share a stat with you. Eight out of ten people will read a headline, but only two out of ten will read the copy that comes after that. That's pretty profound. So if you only nail your headline and the rest of it's a bit CRAP, <laughs> it's okay as long as you've hit them with that headline because most people stop there. So you're saying just if you make sure the headline's perfect, that'll carry the rest of it quite nicely. It can do, definitely. Um, the second point is to make it relevant and this goes back to understanding your audience too. So who are you writing it for? Once you know who you're writing this information for and why they should read it and why they want to read it, um, then you'll be able to come up with content that really is, is relevant to them. Yeah. Like, for example, um, you know, I work with a lot of small business owners, so my content is aimed at small business owners, mm. you know, and I know my market and I'm writing for them. I'm not writing for CEOs of big companies. I'm not writing for solicitors. I'm writing for real people like yourself in the line. So I connect with you and get across my point in as compelling mm -hmm. and authentic way as possible. Yeah, and that goes back to building your tribe. You're building a really niche tribe who are invested in what you have to say. And a question, what do you think of this heading I've got here, Kat? Does that stand out? Well, look, apart from the fact that you've noted some legal activity there, Ed, which I'm not sure about with the uh, legal team, we might have to check on that one. It was actually legal. <laughs> so what it was was that um, I was actually, um, you know, in Auburn with some clients over the weekend and we had these Middle Eastern uh, tobacco pipes. Ah. And it was completely legal. But part of me think it must have been illegal. I walked out of there completely high. Yeah, I spent some time in India a year or so ago and, and, and had a smoke on an old shisha pipe. And I've got to say that, um, you know, it's not as innocent as they say it is. <laughs> exactly. And the point being, again, this is not about me smoking drugs in Auburn, uh, but, but what this is more about is you can see sort of how I've taken this event and I've made a very eye-catching heading about it. That's it. And this got a lot of views, marketing, creativity and smoking drugs in Auburn. Yeah. Do you know why? Because it's controversial. Like, why is Ed talking about smoking drugs? You know, what's he on about? Yeah. Like, I want to read that. Exactly. So, contra you know, these are several different tactics, being a bit controversial, uh, being direct, mm. talking about extreme things and even in nice ways, you can be, po you don't have to be controversial or negative. No. It can be, it can be positive. Yeah. It, it, it's basically about standing for something, having an opinion. You know, if everyone else is, is saying something's great, come out and say why people should consider something else or vice versa. If everyone's being quite negative in your field about a particular thing, maybe you see an opportunity for it to be a positive thing. So, so have that voice. Exactly, exactly. And I think a good example is, is people having a dig at the photo, you know, the photoshopping issue right now. Yeah. You know, um, it's funny on Facebook, um, there was a, 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 a semi-nude photo with quite an overweight woman came out. Ah, okay. And I shared it saying, this woman's hot, I don't care what anyone says, something like that, and it got nothing but likes and resonation. Excellent. And I think standing for something different, you yeah. know, having a different point of view, but that different point of view that you know resonates with your target market. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking about this before, Ed, when you actually have a really strong opinion, um, you're going to polarise people and don't be afraid of that. 
you will upset some people, but they're not the people you need to worry about. As long as you're serving your tribe, then you're onto a winner. Exactly. And there's a good one here. This is an article which I wrote, and I want to sort of show you. It wasn't only to make my own political point, but it's also to use some very um, compelling uh, viewing. This got a lot of views. My article heading is, if you don't see it already, is Gay People in Business, Why I Love Them and Think They Are Awesome. Now, that's a pretty controversial sort of title, isn't it? It's great. It's opinionated. I love it. And it did really well. It got lots of views. And also, again, I mean, I'm obviously you know pro-gay and pro-gay marriage, although I'm a Christian and liberal and all that. But the point to sort of make is that, yeah, I have a lot of gay clients. Mm -hmm. You know, so the fact that my gay clients are seeing me taking their side in such a public way is only going to advance my cause, isn't it, Kat? Yeah, and again, it goes back to being authentic, you know, being truthful. If that's what you believe, put it out there and, and, and don't be afraid of it. Um, I would also just say that um, while you're having an opinion, try and bring it back to your business in some way if you can because, um, you know, it comes back to being relevant. And you do that really well because you've said, okay, this is my belief about um, gay rights. But there's a link in the business sense too. And that's a good example. So the way I've written this content, I've been speaking about gay rights, but I've talked about how they make good clients and I'm a great marketing person. Hmm. You know, so again, this is one example. What I might do just to break things up, I'm going to go back to a real world example. We've talked a lot of online. I guess I know a lot of you guys are thinking online, but I'm just going to randomly go into my archive, which you can probably see, and I'm just going to dig up something which is actual real world. And I know what I'm going to dig up. I'm going to dig up my actual corporate profile. Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, I don't mean to bore the hell out of you guys, and you're going to see this load up now. Um, but a lot of you people that know me in the real world, you would have seen my corporate profile. Now, I don't want to spend heaps of time on this. You know, it's, you know, um, yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time on here. But I just want to show you, this is an example. And Kat's helped me, you know, Kat's looked over this, and she's actually helped me with some of the content on this. And my corporate profile is really how a lot of people in, at least my one-on-one -on -one services decide to hire me. And what's the first thing on my corporate profile? Awesome business and marketing for small businesses. It's just and, and your feet as well. And my feet. They're not my feet, but, you sure, know. Sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, look, you know, it's compelling words, compelling messaging to really resonate and get that response of the target market. So, yeah, and the thing is, too, that if I'm, if I'm your target audience, I see that and I go, small businesses, it's, it's bold. So my eye goes straight to that. I go, yeah, that's me. And yes, I need these strategies. So I'm more likely to open the cover and read on. Exactly. So I think we're saying a lot of things. We're saying be relevant, be different, be short, be direct. Mm -hmm. and, and what other tips have you got there for the audience, uh, um, Kat? Well, look, I know we've been talking a lot about written content, but I do just want to throw up a few other ideas um, for you to think about that make up the whole content cake, if you want to look at it that way. Um, because that's what content is. It's a cake. It's all these different slices of things you can do that make up the whole cake. Um, there are a few things you can do. Infographics are really big at the moment. So an infographic, um, I don't know, would you mind just maybe Googling that for me, Ed, so I can we'll show do. an example. If you go into Google Images and we, we pull one up. Um, so infographics are a really cool way to share information without just writing lots and lots of copy. So we've got one here, which is going to come up on your screen in a momento. Uh, let's have a look, which one should we click on? Oh, look, even that first one. Great. So see how it's um, really colourful. You've got lots of cool little graphs and pictures, and um, sometimes it's a flow chart too, so there'll be arrows taking you through the infographic. So that's a really, really cool way to share information in a different, um, in a different way than just having words on a page. So I encourage you to consider those. There's actually some free um, websites you can do to build your own infographics. PictoChart is one of them, which is P-I-K-T-O chart. Um, it's really easy. You can jump on there and create a free infographic and then it's ready to put onto your blog or, or wherever else. We're just going to pull it up for you now. So, so yeah. So, and there's a few other ones too, but that's just the first one that comes up in Google if you want to check it out. Um, a few other things to think about. Video content. Video is still huge. YouTube is taking over. Um, I would say make sure you've got written content and video content because then you're capturing, you know, two different markets, um, two different styles of, of um, giving information to people and also um, it's great for your SEO to have those two versions as well. So video, podcasts is another great way to do it um, and that can be as simple as recording something on your iPhone. Kind of, Ed, you've, you've done that yourself. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can record uh, content on your iPhone and I want to give a big shout out to Daniel Doherty. Now, uh, Daniel Doherty, have video. Yeah, he says video. Paul. Daniel Doherty, he recommended me this great site, and he did it in our last webinar, is Rev.com. You know, at Rev.com, 
you can get whole things you can get whole sections of information transcribed to really give you know one dollar a minute transcription is very very accurate mm. easy you know. and cheap exactly so if you do lots of content you might just record it to an audio file and you can just send it a dollar a minute and get it all transcribed like for example this webinar is going to get transcribed we've been on here for about 55 minutes it's going to cost me 55 dollars it's all going to be transcribed it's going to be out there publicly for you guys to refer back to yeah and the great thing the great thing for us um, in terms of doing that is also, you know, you guys get the information to take away with you. But Ed, when we share that on our own websites and, and beyond, we're creating mm. shareable content that's going to get recognized in search engines. Exactly. And so in other words, this webinar could promote us for years to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, just amazing. What else have you got? So, Kat? look, I think just to sort of start wrapping up here, Ed, is just coming back to our, our key points about content. The first thing I want to say is don't worry about not being a writer. It's your ideas that are important, particularly when it comes to your blog. Your website, you want to get, you know, pretty pretty spot on with you, the way that you write it. But particularly with blogs and video content and the rest of it, um, it's your ideas that people want to hear and it's the ideas that are going to stick. So focus on that. Have a unique voice. Think about what makes you different and don't be afraid to polarise people. Absolutely. And guys, we've come to the end of our uh, webinar. We've had, um, we had a major content disaster. <laughs> but I, think, I, think we, I hope we survived. Um, we, it's completely all our fault. We're wrong. Something, we're we're, we're going to play the blank. Oh, it's fine. We'll shoot up. It was Candy Cat. It was pan yeah, it was a cat. You know who it was? It was the ABC. Oh, it's the ABC. The ABC, there you go. We're going to blame them. But look, what I'll say is thank you. We've had an amazing webinar. You guys have been an amazing audience. And I was just going to say, um, that's Cat Tate right here. She's right next to me. Her email address is right there. So feel free to visit cattatecopywriting.com.au or cat at cattatecopywriting.com.au. Send her an email if you want to hire amazing services. Um, you know, Cat's more than happy to have a half an hour chat with you just to talk about what you can do and what you can help you yeah, with. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so am I. You know, we're all here ready to help you and just want to say thank you for being an amazing audience. We're going to have this all transcribed and if you're, you know, watching this years later in hindsight, I hope you've enjoyed this time capsule. If you're watching this recently, I hope you're getting some great value of this content. So, guys, I think that's it. There's no more questions. I think we say these awesome people have a good night. Yeah, have a great evening, everyone, and thanks again for joining us. Guys, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Edward's here signing out with Cat Tate. Have a great evening and contact us anytime. Bye.